Solo queue requires a different mindset and if you have been struggling with the solo queue, that's probably it. Also, you will learn why smoke grenades are probably the best secondary gadget in the solo queue and why you should drone a bit less than expected. We love to touch the topic of the solo queue in my stream on the Twitch. Make sure to catch me when I'm live. So let's start, shall we? First of all, to understand this video, let's understand what solo queue is. Two questions. Is solo queue when you're playing in a five stack but all alone? Is solo queue when you start queue alone but you can somewhat do a basic coordination with your team? Such as drone for me or I will drone for you, etc. The five stack is solo queuing. The communication, no matter how many people, is not solo queue. So, solo queue is when you either cannot rely on your team or you don't know if you can rely on them. The moment you're coordinating with anyone, you're no longer solo queuing, but some tips in this video will still be applicable. I will give you a few reasons why you should solo queue after we are done with the tips and tricks. Timestamps are available. Should you play with the team in the solo queue? Short answer is yes, no. Let me elaborate. Your mindset in the solo queue should never be to expect anything from your team, and anything that they do for you is just a bonus. However, this doesn't mean you should be isolated from your team and do everything on your own. You should pick operators solely based on yourself. You are not there to fill the gaps between the team unless very necessary, like Harbor Breacher. However, then you again follow up the rule of picking an operator based on yourself. Go with Hibana or Ace. You can go also with the Maverick or Thermite if you prefer their guns more than Hibanas or Aces. But you might have two questions over here. 1. What if everyone followed your rule and everyone was playing as they wish? Here's a very simple answer. This means your team has some brain cells, therefore you can coordinate with them. And finally this means you're not solo queuing. 2. With the Hibana or Ace. You cannot open as big holes as Termite would have. To answer this, let's go to the consulate and let me ask you a question. When you open up the consulate's garage's wall, can you push the garage or do you need to do vertical pressure onto the defenders? You usually cannot push. That is why, if you have brought Hibana with breaching charges, you can do vertical pressure as well as the open the garage yourself. Also mind that, we have said when you open up the consulate's garage wall. In the lower MMR, opening that wall as termite and relying on your teammates to do the vertical play is pretty much very hard. Now, why do you want to go for a selfish approach when picking an operator? You want to have the impact in the round. The game is very inconsistent, from which map do you enjoy to play, which objective in the map you enjoy, and similar things. Inconsistency also comes from how good or bad your enemy team is, as well as how do you feel today. Now, adding plus one thing in that inconsistency list is not ideal. Solo queue is not consistent, but if you can't make it more consistent, then you should do it. For example, how many times were you in a clutch position when you were anchoring in a solo queue? The outcome of this round is not dependent on you, it is dependent on the roamers and those that deny the map control. If your randoms fail to do their job, you cannot do anything about it. Therefore, you had zero impact on the outcome of the round. What you can do is lose the round because of your faults. The worst thing that can happen to you is a lose a round even if you played it perfectly. An example will be on the clubhouse when defending CC and cash. If you're holding catwalk yourself, you're relying on your team to hold construction and or red stairs, or just rush from the bridge. Reverse, if you were on the top red, you are relying on your team to hold up the garage. How to tackle this issue? Play somewhere that you're not stuck and cannot be on an island. Sometimes you won't be able to do that, but playing around the bar lounge and new blue area will be okay. That way, you can deal with the garage push as well as playing the construction attackers. Mind that how it is somewhat easy to push any defender in the lounge area if attackers have a bit of the coordination. 
To tackle the being isolated issue is mostly down to how attackers played the previous rounds. For example, you can start playing on the Cathawk and if you know that attackers don't push vertically as much, you can drop down the Cathawk and start planking. But this is all heavily depended on the situation. One huge thing to know in the solo queue is that you're being listened to, even if they don't respond. By every means, you always want to be able to get the signal back from your teammates, and that is very easily done by asking them, which operators do we guys want to ban? You will get their answers most likely. Be mindful when you're communicating, you never want to sound like an IGL, or someone that dictates what everyone should do. You should be politely asking or giving information. Like, Ash, let me drone for you. And don't do the following. Do this, do that, spawn there, pew pew, etc. This will usually guarantee you a mute. But remember, whenever you are giving the call, no matter if no one responds, they hear you. Let me talk just a little bit more about picking an operator and fulfilling the roles. You don't and cannot main everyone. I had talked about this in the previous video, but the more you know for a specific operator, the better. This is when it comes to understanding the one trick he operators very handy. Ink is one of the primary examples. She works extremely well in the rank, especially if you know how you can yourself waste ADSs and or magnets. You can clear out very important areas with her, like Villa's Astronomy and Garage's Outback. And you can pretty much clear the whole base band if you're in the pillars. However, what I'm talking here more is, if you need an information operator, I usually go with Valkyrie because not only she's great team based operator, but she's great for the selfish cameras and the monkey playstyles. Speaking about the monkey playstyles, you will try to do them a bit more. Monkey playstyles are called like that because they are unexpected and therefore the enemy team will have a harder time killing you because you are unpredictable and they won't be able to coordinate and push you out if you are a defender or attacker. However, don't take this as a rule of thumb. If you expect attackers to be able to deal with your monkey playstyle, change it a bit. But generally, you want to be a bit more of a rank hero in the solo queue than in a stack. Which role should you be playing in the solo queue? Generally the ones that make impacts in the game. That would be roamers in defense and I would prefer being second entry in attackers. Basically if your team is not communicating, you can always bait your teammates out and retrade them. One more important aspect of the retrading is, do not ever hesitate. You either commit or not. You don't stare at the wall, doing all the calculations and what-ifs, and then do the play. At that moment, the defender is already gone. Should you or should you not roam clear? Generally, do not. There is a technique with how you can do it yourself. I will explain it a bit later. But again, generally, try to take as least map control as you can prior pushing to the side. Of course, if you see your team roam clearing, Help them out. This is back to the yes no answer. This answer doesn't mean to push for the sievers on the bank without getting the hatch cleared, if it is opened. Or this doesn't mean to push dirty the clubhouse. There are way better options than these pushes, which we can talk in the solo queue strat video. And let me know if you guys want it in the comment section. However, pick a take routes that you can cover up your flank with a drone or air jab or tracks. One example will be blocking off the main hall and possibly pushing the green stairs if possible on canal. Smoke grenades can be very handy to your pushes, because with a pair of smoke grenades you can brute force yourself through a crossfire and get the map control. One of the examples will be smoking off cafes red as well as the angus over the cooking and pushing for the dining. With a smoke grenade you can make all the crossfires gone and easily push anything. Another example will be if you want to push the console is garage from the archives, smoke off the default rotation in the cafeteria and be aware of just one angle at a time. We talked enough about the attackers, let me give you a few less known things about when defending. If you're not playing with the intel operator, metal holes are your best intel. 
put them on random but not random places. Places where you most likely won't be using the melee holes, but if attackers are pre-firing them, they will give their position. To give you an example, make a couple of melee holes in the statuary to the bedroom windows. And if attackers are coming that way, you'll most likely hear them shooting it. The next advice is for the people that are in the gold or lower, where vertical presented is not there. Let the attackers open up the garage wall. On the consulate, if you know how to delay the push from the above, you will most likely get attackers to tunnel vision themselves in. This one is not from the personal experience, but when I was talking to lower rank people that watched me. So make sure to know that you should never let them open anything if you think that they will be able to push you in a different ways. But if you know that they prefer to push through just one hole, let them do that, trap them and that's a freebie. One more tip, then we are going back to the attackers, which is the new reinforcement pool. Now, you can yourself reinforce all the important walls, so do it. Do not pay that much, reinforce all the required walls. For example, instead of reinforcing CC walls that your team most likely will, go reinforce the full garage walls. Speak about the utility investment, if you know how a site or a map is played, you will know exactly what your opponents are doing wrong. Therefore, you can apply this and screw them up. You can find here most of the ranked map text guides with pictures on how to attack and defend. I have promised you a technique, and yeah, it is a very easy one. You can always put a one drone in a way that covers most of the entrances, ins and outs of a sector of the map, like the villa one, and with the another one, draw yourself out. That way, if you swap between these two, you'll be able to clear out the sector of the map knowing that no one goes in or out. Also, speaking about the droning, don't drone too much. Your intel that you're getting becomes old within the 3 seconds. Therefore, to act upon it, it is close to impossible. You can drone out a part of the map that you know that they cannot get in once you droned out. Such as admin, paper, break, through the drone hall, soda, and front desk, on the consulate. But when you're in the building, you want to be the crouch walking nightmare, unless you're baiting for your teammates and retrading them. I will give you one more tip after the recap. In the solo queue, you want always to communicate but not expect anything from the team. Pick operators and roles in the round that will enable you to give you as much impact in the round as possible. Do not over drone, and if possible, Play around your team. Help your team if they are being useful, but try to roam clear as less as possible. The final tip will be pick time and solo queue. Time zones come handy here. You can change the data center if on PC. I have made a guide. Check the description. You usually want to avoid younger people, for obvious reasons. The last thing in this video is why do you even solo queue? You can solo queue because you don't have anyone to play with, all of your teammates left siege. However, a good benefit of solo queue is that you're relying here only on yourself. If you get the kill, that's all on you. If you get a kill in the stack, that's most likely due to the information. So to get better mechanically, solo queue is the way. Thank you for watching this video and staying with me for this long and thanks all the patrons and YouTube members for making this video available. If you want to learn all the basics and advanced things about the siege, make sure to give me a like, subscribe and click the notification bell to get all notifications on my channel. Make sure to give me feedback down in the comment section below.